Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man and it's time to make some soap. And today I'm going to revisit a soap I made, I don't know, at least a year ago, year and a half ago, but I really like the result. And I did that one in my tall skinny mold with some piping on top. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use the mold I did last week and I finally got some freezer paper so it's properly lined and it won't leak today. So I'm gonna be doing that same design in that mold. And it's going to be, I guess, maybe you could say it's a desert landscape. So on the bottom, which would kind of represent the ground and maybe the sand, possibly, I'm going to be using two colors. I'm going to drop swirl in um, black oxide from Mad Micas. And then I'm also going to drop swirl in um, Goldfinger from Mad Micas. And I'm going to put just a little splash of fire cider to make that just a little bit red. Also, I'll drop swirl those in for the base and then I'll wait for it to get really thick so I can make a really heavily textured base. Then we'll have kind of the sky which will be Nurture Soap's Blue Vibrance lightened up with some titanium dioxide. And I think I finally found a good yellow that I like. So uh, once again it's Nurture Soap's Yellow Vibrance which I'm slowly using up, but this doesn't stay. It always looks good at first, even like 24 hours later when I cut it, but it always seems to fade. I had been using a different neon, but last week I put in uh, Mad Micah's Tennis Ball Breaker, and those two together have gotten a really nice stable yellow. This, this is after one week, and that's the same that it looked a week ago, so really happy with that. So that will represent kind of the sun in the desert uh, landscape. I am back to doing the heat transfer method, so I've got my lye ready to mix together and my hard oil, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get set up, and I'll be back and we'll get started on this. Okay, I'm back and ready, so let's start with the bottom layer. So this is going to be the Mad Micah's Goldfinger, and I'm just a level teaspoon is probably more than enough, but let's stir it in, be sure. And it is, yep, just fine. And just a little splash of this fire cider to make it just a little more red. side, which I have just recently started using. Um, I really prefer activated charcoal, but it's up at the church, and I have this, and I just hate to waste it, so I'm going to, and I know how potent this is, I'm going to put in probably a half a teaspoon, which I think is probably more than ample, and I think... This is a lot like titanium dioxide. It becomes more potent when it's stick blended. Yeah, I could because it's sort of clump like oxides do. Like your neons will clump. They need to be stick blended, and your your titanium dioxide needs to be stick blended. But I'm okay stick blending it in because the fragrance behaves, and I want this to set up. So let's give these a buzz and let's get our fragrance in. And I forgot to tell you, I'm using Eighth and Ocean from Nurture Soap. That's what I'm fragrancing it with. And even though this is sort of, you know, it's an ocean theme, this is a really good all-purpose, goes with any design because it doesn't really have like your tropical fruity beach scene, but it smells great, behaves great, and holds up its scent. It's one of my top favorites from Nurture, so love it. So let me give these a good buzz and get the fragrance in. Because it's barely been stick blended. And I'm going to want it to set up so I don't wait forever to get started on the next layers. And I 
think that black will really darken as soon as I stick blend it. Oh yeah. And that was a really good blending for these two, but once again, very well behaving fragrance and I want this to set up so I can get it textured and not wait forever to get the rest of the layers done. This isn't the best lining job I've ever seen. Um, this is a skill, lining with paper is a skill just like soap making and I'm not the best at it, but anyway, it shouldn't leak and hopefully I'll get better with time. And it may be a guy thing, too. If you'd see me try to wrap a Christmas present, you'd understand. I don't know. Maybe men just can't do that. I know I am terrible at wrapping Christmas presents. That's why I don't do it. See, even well stick blended, my batter is starting to get grainy. I really like my batter when it's uh, room temperature. I've really gotten accustomed to that. But I'm afraid with the low the cooler temperatures coming, I'm afraid that's going to make it too cold. Okay, now that I want really, really thick. So I'm gonna wait a while, so I'll be back. All right, I've gone ahead and started texturing this so we're not here forever, or you're not here forever watching, but what I'm doing is using the end of the spoon and I'm doing it nice and slow and I'm sticking it in pretty deep to make nice raised edges, maybe even sort of like rocks. And I can tell that I'm going to have a disproportionate amount of ground versus sky. I'm not used to using this mold. I haven't used it in years. I'm so used to my other two. So not going to have a good proportion of earth to ground, but or sky to ground, but oh well. It's soap. That's as far as I'm going to go. I need to stop. Sometimes I tend to go a little too far with that. So let's set that aside and let's work on the sky now. So I'll pour some of this off for the clouds. And that looks good. So the sky is going to be the blue vibrance, which is beautiful by itself, but I'd like to have it a little lighter. So for that amount, I'm going to put two level teaspoons and go ahead and stir it in so it's well mixed, and then I can kind of gauge how much lightening I want to do.
So that is going to take probably, I would say a teaspoon. I'll just put the TD in this. If you all watch me, you know that I just blend it straight in when I know that I can do it. If I'm working with a well designed, a well working fragrance, and I'm not working on a long, complicated pour, I know I can just hand stir it in, no problems. Or, excuse me, stick blend it in, no problems. Gonna save that for the sky. Guys, a little thick. I'm not happy with the way this batter is behaving at this warmer temperature. See, I got a big clump in there. This, this is not good. I do believe I'm going to stick at room temperature soaping. Look at those clumps. Even well stick blended, I just don't know. I'm going to let that set up and I'll be back. All right, let's finish this up. My batter is 89 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not an unusual temperature. I've soaked it much higher than that, so just don't know why it's behaving so weird. But I've had that happen before and it gets grainy. I just, I just don't know. But I'm just afraid that this winter, when it really gets cold, that room temperature is going to be too cold. But I may still stick with that. We'll see. Anyway, there's my yellow grapevine. So let me go ahead and stir that in. So it's mixed. And see, my batter's still fluid. But it seems like once I get everything in and then stick blend it, that's when it gets grainy. Just hand stir it. It's nice and fluid. close to a teaspoon of this neon.
this should be a quick pour, so I'm not too worried about it turning grainy because I'm going to go right in the mold right now. I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to let that firm up just a little bit and just kind of get an even textured top on it. So anyway, I'll do that, squirt it with some rubbing alcohol, and we'll put it to bed and see what it looks like tomorrow with the cut. I don't think the sky is going to be quite what I was expecting, but we'll see tomorrow. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm back. It's time to cut our soap. And I had some challenges with this one. First of all, I realized when I cut it, look at that big hole in the center where I was making the divots. I got too close to the edge. Uh, one of them, I cut it wrong. I'll open it up in just a second, but right here is one bar and right here is one bar. I measured it and I just did not get it right. So, uh, cut it wrong. The biggest issue was the sky. I don't know what causes it. When I use the heat transfer method, which I used all winter, once in a great while I have a phenomenon where part of the batter is as thin as water, and parts of it have clumped up. That's what happened here. And I don't know what caused it, and I thought it was just gonna to totally ruin the sky. Well, even though I cut it wrong when I cut into it, guess again. It turned out great. Now, I really would have liked to have had a little bit less ground and a little more sky, so the proportion was a little off, but not as bad as I thought. But anyway, the sky is exactly what I wanted. And I decided, what I'm going to do is cut this bar this way so this will be the face of the soap and then I'll cut this other bar the traditional way. That will get me the 18 bars that I like to get. 18 is what I consider a regular batch. So this one threw several sour lemons but I found a way to make sweet lemonade out of it after all. And it's going to be a nice looking bar of soap. So let's cut this one. I have it pre-measured. So that's kind that's a nice thick chunky one. You got a nice even on the side you got a nice view. So yeah, and then let's cut this other one. This will be cut the traditional way. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was cutting on the right edge. So here we go, let's see, let me just...
There's that hole on the end. <clears throat> So despite multiple challenges, I still ended up with a bar that's exactly what I was hoping for. So I am really pleased with these, and that's what I have this week. And like always, thanks for watching. Stay safe, take good care of yourselves, and be blessed, and I will see you next time around. Bye, everybody.